some of you have slipped in since uh, we've opened, and I just say thank you again for being here. Glad to see Sister Marilyn here. Um, I know she got tired of me bringing her ice, um, but uh, I'm glad to see Sister Marilyn here, Brother Jesse here today. Um, my heart comes heavy to you. Uh, we've had a lot going on over the last week. Um, as many of you know, we've been praying for Stephanie Stroud. Uh, she passed away last night. Um, over into the night, she passed away. She was a fighter. She, uh, I think she's been in the hospice house about two weeks. and uh, So she she was a true fighter. She's been battling cancer for a couple years now. Um, so let's, let's continue to remember their family in prayer. Also, um, I forgot his name. Um, passed away. There was another one that passed away. I'm sorry. Um, but we need to remember their family. Also, I'll, I'll remember the name before we get done. Um, let's also remember that family. Let's continue to remember the um, Shaw family as they went through a uh, uh, passing of Darlene last week. Um, they, um, they had a memorial service Wednesday night, and uh, they need a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer going on for their family. Continue to remember um, my family. As many of you know, Brother James announced it Wednesday night. Um, he has some decisions to make about some surgeries coming up and uh, needs a lot of prayer. And um, I tell you, it's, uh, I know a lot of you, I, I can be a little biased. He is my grandfather and he's a good friend. He's a good mentor and a good friend and always been there for me. And we just need to really pray and ask God, whatever God's will is, let it be done. I've, I've learned over the last couple of years, you know, we pray all the time for healing which is great and awesome, but we need to pray for God's will to be done. Because when God's will is done, there will be healing. There will be a chance where God just steps in and does His work. But we have to remember, His will will be done. I think about it, if we prayed all the time for God to heal, 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 nobody would die. Amen? If He answered all those prayers, nobody would die. But there's a reason and a purpose for everything, and God's got a will and a purpose for your life. And this morning, if you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm 63. And I mentioned this last Sunday night as we were having our altar service. And God laid it on my heart last Sunday. And uh, this goes along with our soul session messages. Psalm 63, it says, Oh God, Thou art my God. Early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsts for Thee. My flesh longing for Thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is, to see thy power and thy glory. So I have seen thee in the sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life. I'm going to read that one more time. Because thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in, my, in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul floweth hard after thee, thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for the foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Shall be stopped. Today, as I said, I want to continue our series on soul sessions. With a song of worship in the wilderness. The first week, that was a song of God is. We looked and said, God is our refuge. He is our strength. He is our dwelling place. Last week, we looked at a song of repentance. We realized that we must come back to God and repent and let God know He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. And, and listen, a lot of you want me to preach a uh Hell, fire, and brimstone. I love that when people say that. Oh, I want you to preach that hell, fire, and brimstone down. You know what, church? If we would just repent, we wouldn't need a hell, fire, and brimstone message. Some of you say, well, Bobby, that's the only way I will repent. You know what, church? If you repent, 
has already been begging me for the last two weeks to put our Christmas tree up. Well, I was like, no, we're going to go through Thanksgiving. we got to make it through Thanksgiving. Now, some of you, if you put your Christmas stuff up, God bless you. Uh, but you know what? We jump so much to the birth of Jesus that we forget to be thankful of what he did after he was born. We forget to be thankful of the blessings that he's given us now. We rush time so much. We try to jump ahead so much. And then when we get older, we say, where did the time go? You know what, church? Let's be thankful today for what he is doing in our lives right now. And that is he woke us up this morning and he put us here in a place of worship. He put us here with a body of believers. He put us here with a fellowship to help lift us up. He put us here with his Holy Spirit, his comforter. He gave us the one and only, the power that we all need. If we would just be thankful for what he has done now. What he's done now. We've got to get back to that. Last week we spoke on repentance. In this Psalms we have David fleeing. And you see David, who would have been well into his 40 year reign over Israel, had been busy extending the kingdom and most importantly gathering the materials to, buy, to build the Temple of Solomon. But during this time, some things started happening and David finds himself in the wilderness. You see, the wilderness is a place that are not that is not fruitful. It is less inhabited than the other places. The wilderness is a place where you are lonely and in solitude. You are desolate and afflicted. You are wanted, wandering, and unseldom. Listen, church, the wilderness is a time when we get into our lives that we feel like there's nothing else that can help. It is a time when we're out in the middle of nowhere. Yes, there's people around us. There's things going on around us. But we feel like there's no more hope. We feel like there's nothing else that we can do. There's a song that came out a long time ago. I'm in a desert with a horse with no name. Listen, if you're in a desert, you're starting to freak out. Because you feel like there's no coming out. See, David was in this wilderness. He's in a place where, where we see the priest comes to Jesus and asks, how do I get into the kingdom of God? And, and he, he came at night. You know, a lot of time our wilderness is at nighttime. And I'm not talking about a nighttime where it's dark. I'm talking about a nighttime where you're alone. You don't feel the spirit of God anymore. You don't feel the light, the presence of God anymore. And David's at this time in his life where he's in the wilderness. Everybody's coming after him. And he just doesn't know, how do I get out of it? How do I get out of it? There's a lot of you here this morning that are going through situations in your life and you don't think you can ever make it out of it. You think there is no light at the end of the tunnel. You think that, listen, I, some of you have sicknesses going on right now that, that you just say, hey, I, I'm about ready to give up. I don't even think I can do anything anymore. Some of you have family issues, children that are unsaved, that you're like, oh, Lord, I, I've been praying for years and years and years, but there's nothing, there's no fruit. There, there's nothing there, and you're about ready to give up. But I want to let you know, when you're in the wilderness, guess what happens? You find a place, and the presence of God will take you out of it. I want you to remember, David went into the wilderness, and then guess what? He came out of the wilderness. Listen, church, nobody starts in the wilderness, and nobody finishes in the wilderness. You go through the wilderness. That's right. Now, some of us just want to stop and stay in the wilderness. Oh, poor pitiful me. Sister Sherry hates it when I watch something on TV. And there's something, there's a disease they're researching or something like that. Because I start saying, well, I've been having that side of things. <laughs>
I thought I was having a heart attack the other day. She said, what's going on? I said, I'm having chest pains. I said, my neck's tightening up. Come to find out, yeah, it'll tighten up when you work out the muscles a little bit. <laughs> and I start complaining and, and I start thinking, oh, poor pitiful me. You know, there's too many Christians that have put their self in the wilderness and there's no more joy in their life. There's always sickness. There's always problems. But church, I want to let you know, if you are dwelling in God, you will be victorious. So why can't we praise Him in the wilderness? Why can't we worship Him in the wilderness? You see, this wilderness, I don't mean it's a wilderness of sin, but it's a wilderness of trials, tribulations, and temptations. You see, a lot of us go through times of being in the wilderness just like David. But even then, it is our duty and it is our interest to keep up a cheerful communion with God. I want, to, I want you to realize that I said earlier, David did not start out in the wilderness. He did not end up in the wilderness. He only made his way through the wilderness. You see, many make great men of God have spent time in the wilderness. People like Abraham. He was in a wilderness that held a city whose builders and mark maker was God. Moses, a wilderness that gave him the law, a pattern of worship, and a place for doubters to die. Jesus, a wilderness that would give him power of his flesh, this world, and of the devil. John the Baptist, a wilderness that would be in the birthplace of a spiritual revival. And David, a wilderness that he would learn how to worship. Nancy Newhall made a quote that said, the wilderness holds answers to questions that man has yet to ask. You see, David, while in the wilderness, knew that something had to change. Church, I want us to realize that when we are in the wilderness, we still need to be in a lifestyle of worship. In the Psalms, David shows us how. The first way David continues a lifestyle of worship is by seeking his faith. Listen, church, not seeking his hand. Not seek, listen, what I mean by seeking in his hand means by seeking a help out of the wilderness. No, he said, I'm going to seek his face that when I'm in the wilderness, guess what? I still see and feel the presence of God. Amen. Church, if we would just seek his face, Amen. stop asking him for everything and just say, God, I just need you. I need the presence of you. I just need I, the, the glory of you. I just need to fall on my face in front of you. It doesn't matter what's on the right side or the left side, the front or the back. All I know is I'm in the presence of God. Yes, man. Presence of God. We got to get back to that. See, David in Psalms 63, 1 through 2, it said, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory. So I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Church, I was watching the news this week, and I don't watch the news a lot. Because the first 14 minutes is that. But listen, church, we are in a dry and thirsty land. Amen. People are trying to find something to quench that thirst. I want to let you know, the reason why you're so thirsty when you're drinking a soft drink and the reason why you keep going back to it is because it makes you more thirsty. Because of the stuff that's inside of it makes you even more thirsty and you go back and get more and more and more. Church, you know what? That's the problem with drugs, with alcohol, with, with lust, with all these other sins of the flesh. The reason why we keep going back to it is because it don't fulfill anything. And there's people that are thirsty for the, for the word of God and as Christians we're sitting back and we're not seeking the face of God. We like to put the blame on the government. We like to put the blame on the television. We like to put the blame, blame on, the, on the schools. Church, if you are in the presence of God, then it doesn't matter who comes around you. They will know that you are a changed person. You will be able to walk a walk that nobody else can 
walk because you are in the presence of God. In a dry and thirsty land, the only thing that will, will help satisfy is a little bit of rain. And you know what, church? We need a little bit of rain of, of the Spirit of God in our lives. I think about Brother Hank last week. I, I hope you don't mind me saying this. Sister Sherry said he was sitting back there and he was ready to come up here. And when he got the chance, he came up here and you could just feel the presence of God all over him. Church, if we would just seek his face, then guess what, church? The thirsty will cry out and want more and more of the spirit of God. The dry land won't be dry anymore because the harvest will grow and the workers will be there to help guide the harvest to the next step of God. In a dry, and thirsty land. The word sanctuary in verse 2 means a place of refuge or a holy place. Church, a couple weeks ago in Psalms 91, we realized that God is our holy place. But David here is telling us that we must seek him in our time of trouble. For God to be our sanctuary in the wilderness, you must seek his face. David knew that he must seek God and his favor and grace during this time. We must continue to seek him and we must covenant his favor as our good chief, good and consult his glory as our highest end. And we must seek his acquaintance through his word and through prayer. We read this all the time. 2 Chronicles 7 14 says, If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Church, I want you to realize this. Look at this. If my people, that means, guess what? That you have found the dwelling place of God. If my people, he will not call you his person if you're not in God. Then he says, listen, if they would turn from their wicked ways, if they would repent, as we talked about last week, if you have repentance, you return, you return from your wicked ways. And then seek my face. When you're in the wilderness, you know you're a child of God because you've already repented. You already feel like you're inside of Him. But you must contain a style of worship in your life. And the only way that you can do that is by seeking His face. Amen. Seek His face. David tells us two ways to seek God. David said that he will seek Him early with the uttermost care as those is afraid of missing Him. Church, we must begin our days with Him. So when we are in the wilderness, we will feel Him moving in our lives. Amen. The other day, me and my wife was at home. We was watching TV. If you know anything about Elijah, he don't sit anywhere alone. He ran off into the back bedroom. And I thought Sherry was going to find him, and she thought I was. And we started yelling, Elijah, Elijah. And he didn't make any noise, so we knew he was doing something that he shouldn't be doing. So about that time, I jumped up, and now our house is not that big. But I ran through the house because I wanted to seek and find where he was at because I knew that something might be wrong or something might be going wrong if I didn't get there in time. Church, I want you to realize every time that we get away from God, every time we miss his face, if we would just go ahead and turn right then and seek his face, it doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter if you're at Walmart, at Bilo, at church. It doesn't matter as long as you turn and seek his face. Because listen, if we don't seek it early, maybe we'll never find him in the midst of the trouble that we're in. Amen. Seek him early. <coughs> and then <coughs> he says, seek him earnestly. He said, my soul thirsted for thee and my flesh longed for thee. Which means that my whole man is affected with the pursuit of God. You see, he was saying that this world is dry. It is in a weary land and if we, it, it yields no satisfaction. So church, we need to seek God to fill up our souls. He desires we're not, his, we're not of this world, but on God. He said, I will seek you to the point 
that in my wilderness, I will still feel your presence as if I was in the tabernacle. I will still feel your presence as if I was right there at the Ark of the Covenant. I will still feel your presence. Listen, so many people want to get to heaven. You know what? You can still feel that presence here on earth. People just seek his face. Once we seek him, we must praise God's name. Amen. Psalm 63, 3 through 6 says, Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus I will bless thee with it while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee at night, Listen, church, we are, we are in a time where we forget to praise God. We forget to praise God. Every Sunday morning I stand back there in the back and you tell me, good service, Bobby, great word, great message. Listen, it has nothing to do with me. It has all the praise to do with God. Amen. Listen, I can't speak any of these words unless his spirit gets a hold of it. Or it's just me getting up here just telling you a story. Just telling you, a, a reading a book for you. Listen, church, we must praise God. We must give him glory. We must give him honor. Listen, the Bible even says in Psalms that I will lift up my hands and worship you. And let the praise come out of my lips. I will meditate on you, O oh God. Listen, we can't even lift up our hands here and praise and worship anymore. Too stuck on congregational singing. There's a difference. Congregational singing is when the whole congregation gets up and sings words. Praise and worship is not when everybody gets up and sings words. It is giving glory and honor to God. It is giving Him all the praise, giving Him all the honor. Well, Bobby, I don't like that song. Well, you know what? Just start giving Him praise and honor anyway. Well, they didn't sing it the way I said. Well, you know what? Bust out in your own song. It won't bother anybody else as long as it's in the presence of God. Listen, we need to get back to a place of praise and worship. We need, goodness, it's so sad that we can't even say thank you, God, anymore. You know how you get out of the wilderness? You know how you worship in the wilderness? You give him praise and worship. You give him all the honor. You give him all the glory. You see, as soon as David began to seek God, then he turns his direction to giving God praise and thanksgiving. You see, I think about it, and I heard a preacher say this this week. You see, when we come together for our church service, we do three things when we come together as one. We, we pray, we preach, and we praise and worship. Amen? That's, what, that's the reason why most people come to church. To pray, to have a preaching or teaching, and for praise and worship. You know what, church? There will be no praying in heaven because there's nothing to pray about. There will be no preaching in heaven because guess what? Jesus is already there. We don't have to tell them how to get to them because there's no preaching. But you know what, church? There will be praise and worship. If you can't praise and worship here, then how in the world are you going to be able to praise and worship there? This is, this is a battlefield, I know. But listen, I know a lot of you have had victorious battles. Because if you hadn't, you wouldn't be here today. You would already be dead and gone. Or you would already be in a point where you just couldn't get out of the house anymore. And you would just be laying there. But I know people that are shut-ins that still praise and worship God. And they say, guess what? I might not hear the preaching anymore. I might not go over there for prayer. But I can still praise and worship God in my bad times. I can praise and worship God in my good times. And just like David, if we're ever going to come out with a worship-style lifestyle, we must praise Him. After seeking God, David expressed joy that he had already found in God. Church, I wish we could realize that faithful prayers 
can turn into joyful praises. Psalms 105 and 3 says, Glory ye in His holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Listen, church, if we would seek the Lord, then the heart will rejoice. David was now in the wilderness and yet had his heart much enlarged in blessings of God. <coughs> Not getting out of the wilderness, but giving thanks for God. You see, David first gives praises to God for because, because of his loving kindness is better than life. You see, David is saying God's loving kindness in itself and the account of all the saints is better than this life will ever be. You see, if our spiritual life and it's much better than our temporal life. Psalms 35 says, For his anger endureth but a moment, in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, but joy, but joy cometh in the morning. Amen. It is better a thousand times to die in God's favor than to live under his wrath. But David does not stop there. He tells us how he will praise God and how long in verse 4. He says, thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. He says, as long as I live, I will lift up my hands and praise him. Amen. How does I live? After we praise God, after we seek God, the third thing, I think this is the hardest thing for any of us to do, is we must expect God to do. Amen. We must expect God to do. Verse 7 says, Because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul floweth hard after thee, thy right hand uphold me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for the fox. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. You see, after David expressed his desires towards God and then gave presents, <coughs> praises to him, God gave him confidence in him and joyful expectations of him. Listen, church, we must expect God will do. Amen. Yes. Don't raise your hands. Think about it. How many times have you said a prayer but you really didn't have faith that it would be done? Amen. About four or five years ago, Brother James had a vision that we would have this building across the street. A lot of you know now that we had that building across the street. But it took us about two or three years, if I'm not mistaken. And you know what? We prayed for it. And people said, you know, God, you know, just, just, just let us have it. Just let us, you know, God, just, you know, we, we need it. And then about a year later, they said, well, God, whatever your will is. Then a year later, it's probably some of your prayers. Well, God, just get that off of Brother James's mind. You know, a lot of us, and then when God did, we said, well, how are we going to pay for it? We didn't expect that God would. Listen, if God's will is for us to have something, then let it be done. If, if, if God is, if you praised him, and listen, a lot of you said, well, I prayed for sickness, and, and it never went away, and a person died. You know what? They're victorious right now because there's no more sickness. There's no more pain. There's no more troubles. Maybe it didn't go the way you wanted it, but expect God will do it. Amen. <laughs> Preached a message back in January about a man that prayed for the sun to stand still. A lot of you think that's really dumb because you could pray all day and say, Well, you know what? He prayed boldly and he said, God, this victory will be yours as long as you let the sun stand still and we can finish this fight. You know what, church? I bet you money at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night when he was sitting there and the sun's still up and then 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock and then 1 o'clock in the morning and the sun is still up. I, I tell you what, some of those people are like, wow, what is going on? But I, the man of God stood up and said, 
said, you know what? I prayed a prayer. I gave him praise. I gave him honor. And now I expected that he will do. And he did. And we are victorious. David had gone through this before and he gives us two reasons why he had hope that God was going to do. The first reason he had hope was because of his former experience of God's power in revealing him. Verse 7 said that because thou hast been my help when others, other help and helpers have failed me, therefore I will still rejoice in my salvation and will trust in God for the, for the future. Church, if you have made it this far, God has helped you somewhere. So let's take that experience and put it to the next storm. Put it to the next wilderness. Put it to the next trial. Put it to the next temptation. Because if God has done it, he'll do it again. The second reason why he had a sense of God's grace, because it was carrying him at that time. He said in verse 8, my soul full of heart out to thee. Which speaks a very earnest desire and a serious endeavor to keep up communion with God. If we cannot always have God in our embraces, we must always have Him in our eye, reaching forth towards Him as our prize. We learned a couple weeks ago that, listen, God said, if you dwell in me, you will be victorious. But why the victory might the victory might not happen right now? It might happen later. And you know what? I won't just make sure you're victorious. I will help get you through the battle as you're fighting. It. Listen, church. If we would realize that God is with us in the wilderness, then we would realize how to live a lifestyle of praise and worship. He's with us always. He's with us right now. He's with us when we woke up this morning. He's with us when we were sleeping. He's with us when we're at the doctor's appointment. He's with us when we lose our job. He's with us when our family is arguing and fighting. He is with us at all times. He says, just rely on me. And I will help you through it. I will help you through it. Philippians 3 and 14 says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press towards the mark of, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. To press hard after God is to follow Him closely as those that you are afraid of losing the sight of Him. Losing the sight of Him. Listen. Here it comes to the piano. Have you ever been lost? I'm not talking about in a spiritual sense. I'm just talking about you ever been lost. Me and Sister Sherry and Brother Brent and Sister Paula went up to, um, to the mountains two years ago. Getting on two years. And I'm not a mountain driver. I don't like mountains. I don't even like wilderness. Not a big tree fan. Not rather have sand in an ocean. I'm good with that. We went up to the mountains and we got a cabin. And I was thinking, yeah, it's gonna be easy, you know. But we get on this mountain and we go in and there's no GPS because you know you're in a mountain. And we got up on top of this mountain. I mean, I'm talking about. Brother Brent, I guess he knew what he was doing, but me and Sister Sherry was falling behind him. We didn't have a clue. And I was scared because we were lost. And I'll never forget when we was on top of that mountain, we come to a road where you couldn't even see where you're going down at. And I said, you know what? If I could just stay close to Brent, if he falls off the mountain, then I'll fall off with him. It'll be all right. <laughs> if I could just stay close to him, he can help guide me to where I need to be. Church, if we could just stay in the presence of God, <coughs> if, if God's presence moves here, we should step with it. If God's presence moves up, we should go up. But a lot of times when God's presence moves from us, we look at the
the situation is moving to, and we turn and go the other way. We run from it. Listen, church. David knew. The man that got it wrong a couple of times, he still knew that he was after God's heart. Listen, he knew that he wanted to stay in the presence of God no matter what. He knew that if God, if God went right, I go right. If he goes left, I go left. I will follow him. Yeah, I might fall a couple of times as I'm following him, but I'll jump right back up and hold on to his coattail. He'll have to drag me if he wants to get rid of me. When this time of trouble came, he didn't complain. First he said, listen, i got to get closer to God. He said, I will seek your face. Second, he says, you know what? I've already felt your glory. I've already felt all the presence that you've given me. So I'm going to give you the praise and honor. No matter what I'm going through, if I'm going to go through the fire, I'm going to praise you and honor you. Because your loving kindness is better than any life that I can live without you. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to expect that you will do. That you do. There's many of you that's going through trials right now. There's many of you going through issues in your life. There's times in this week that I just wanted to sit and cry. Everything that was just going on and seeing people just have rough times. And, and I'm a type of person that wants to help anybody that could possibly help. And I was talking to some of these people that I was coming in contact to. And they just told me, Bonnie, there's no more hope. I don't just feel like I can do it anymore. And you know what? Myself wanted to tell them, you know what, you're probably right. But then God hit me with this scripture. trials and tribulations in the wilderness in my life in your life you dwell in me and I will do I will do you seek my face you seek my presence you hang on to me with all that you have you have faith as little as a mustard seed you just have that little bit of faith in me and you just seek who I am I will do. If you would just praise and give me worship, if you would just fall on your knees and say, God, I know it's hard right now, but you have made it a better day. Joy comes in the morning. Then I will do. And if you would just expect it, it'll be done. It'll be done. Not in your timing, but in my timing. In my will. In, 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 listen, church, you can pray for a million dollars all you want to. But you know what? If it's not the will of God, it's not going to happen. But if you would give him praise, you would give him honor, you will never need again.
came, there's your path. We need to be a church of faith. A church of faith. A lot of you laugh when I say 3,000. A lot of you laugh when I say 200. You know what, church? If we are a church of faith in God's will, in God's time, he will grow us to where we need to be. But you know what, church? It can't be just one person that has faith. We come together as a body, as a community of Christ, and say, God, we expect and we believe that you will do. But you'll never know until you repent. That was last week's message. Well, you know what? You're going to hear it a lot more. You need to repent. You need to repent from your old ways. Repent from the past. It says become a new creature in Christ. Listen, if you're still going out and doing the things that you know is wrong, then you better get your life straight because when you get into the wilderness, you won't feel the presence of God. You'll try to praise and worship Him, but you won't feel it. And when you expect there's nothing to expect because there's nobody there until you repent. 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 Come back to God. Come back to God. And I ask you this morning, if there's anyone here this morning that does not know Christ, here's your opportunity. Why do you go to the altar? Because you know what? And it's so great. It's so awesome. We've forgotten what the altar is all about. I heard Brother Chucky preach a great message on this a couple of weeks ago. Listen, the altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a place of surrender. It's so funny that when Abraham was taking his child up the mountain and they were going up to sacrifice and God told him to go sacrifice him. You know what? The child never asked. I, he never asked, what are we doing? He knew because he had the wood, he had the fire. He knew that there was about to be an altar, a place of sacrifice. You know what, church? The, the altar is a place where you come and give the ultimate sacrifice you can ever give. And that is your broken self. Broken self. If you do not know God this morning, I'm asking you to come to the altar. If you are in the wilderness, I'm going to ask you to come to the altar and seek God's face. If you've already seen God's face, I'm going to ask you to come to the altar. Just give Him praise and give Him worship. And if you said, well, Bobby, I've seen His face. I've repented. I've given Him praise and worship. Then I want you to come to the altar and just say, God, I know that you are going to work. You're going to do what you need to do. Your will will be done. change your way of thinking. Come let God show you that even in the wilderness, you can still feel His presence. Lord, we come to you today. God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the lifestyle of worship that you've given us, God. Lord, we want to give you all the praise and all the honor. It's not about a preacher. It's not about a Sunday school teacher. God, it's not about the fellowship. It's all about you, God. It's all about what you want done, God. And Lord, today I ask if there's anyone that just wants to surrender their life to you, God. Lord, I ask that you just give them that touch that they need. Just give them that little boost to stand up, God. Lord, there's no time to be a pet rally for you, God. It is a time to be a hospital for the sick and murdered, God. God, we give you all the glory and all the honor. Lord, we pray. We pray for conviction on our lives, God. Lord, we pray that we just come closer to you, God. We seek your face. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're going to do.